uh, I'm going to present today more in depth what uh, what risk accounting is and what can uh, it help with. Let me just share my screen. Right. So the story begins in the banking sector. <laughs> Uh, and we hopefully are going to see a very um, successful story here because um, what I'm going to introduce to you is, uh, was supposed to streamline the operations management in a large uh, international bank. And at the time it did uh, its job quite, uh, quite well. Uh, we'll start with um, like a, the way we see in a simplified way, uh, how a business works, like uh, having three main components that should be working together as flawlessly as possible, which one, uh, which are production, so production or operations, where the business happens, accounting and uh, risk. But are they working together as they should? Usually what we see in, uh, in reality is that uh, most of the time uh, for them to function, they need to be um, slightly dislocated. And then you'll see them not moving in the same direction or even, uh, developing with uh, with different priorities, like uh, you see here, like a compliance-driven uh, organization that would uh, inhibit its own uh, potential, or uh, there can be a production or operations-oriented organization that would uh, accumulate more uh, exposure to unexpected losses. <clears throat> So from our perspective, for these uh, components to move in the same direction and with equal priority, uh, the additional component needed is what we call risk accounting. <clears throat> so what is risk accounting and how does it work? Uh, at uh, a high level representation of uh, risk accounting can be uh, summarized in the following elements that you see on the screen and we'll take uh, each one um, um, and, and describe each one. Uh, an initial setup, which we'll describe shortly, the data input capability, a calculation capability, the result output, uh, and the feedback loop that would um, then um, help adjust uh, whatever needs to be adjusted in the in the setup and input uh, areas. The main um, element, however, is the uh, or the key element of this approach is the risk unit or RU. You heard us mentioning uh, it as RU several times, maybe yesterday, which is a common additive metric that expresses all forms of non-financial risk, and it's used to quantify, aggregate, and report exposures to non-financial risk using three core metrics that we'll describe further. The inherent risk, the risk mitigation index, and the residual risk. So going to the setup um, element, the setup requires basically the definition of the following. <clears throat> the business components table, which comprise all the organizational units that are subject to, to the assessment. They include units that handle transactions to ensure key, uh, to ensure they, they are properly authorized and their processing is complete, accurate, and timely, or they provide essential support or information to those units in the fulfillment of their processing obligations. Uh, the products table, uh, such as in the case of a bank, for example, it's uh, uh, products such as FX forwards, commercial loans, secured, uh, secured fixed term deposits, repos, cross currency swap, etc. <clears throat> uh, the risk type, uh, the risk types table for the purpose of non-financial risk calculation engine. Uh, uh, pr principal operation uh, risk types are standardized for each industry sector, and for the for the banking industry, they include, uh, for example, uh, processing risk, trading risk, lending risk, etc. And uh, uh, the what we call the advanced measurement approach to uh, categories table, which helps in the development of uh, the enhanced risk and control self-assessment questionnaires for the following categories. So there are two main categories, generic, which include control, people, execution, business continuity, risk control, etc., and technical data quality management, uh, vendor management, core system management, management etc., like external logical access management. Uh, the input uh, element <clears throat> allows for the da data input relative to the following. Uh, each product risk profile um, through the exposure, what we call uh, exposure uncertainty factor or EUF. Uh, basically, the more complex uh, a product is, the more risk exposure it brings into the organization, hence the higher uh, EUF value. EUF, EUFs are scaled as a value between 0 and 20. 
reflecting each product's operational com complexity and the consequent process burden that it imposes on the uh, on the uh, enterprise. We just have uh, an easier to process visualization. So, you know, the, the higher the, uh, the product complexity, the, the higher the UF value. And then uh, we have the transaction volume uh, band weightings uh, or VBWs. Uh, of course, the more uh, of a risky product the organization sells, the more it adds to the organization exposure. So a value band weighting is uh, basically assigned to each product based on uh, the amount of daily new business booked. And uh, value band weightings are a measure of the severity of potentially uh, unexpected losses relative to the sale of a specific uh, product. So basically the higher the, the value band weighting, the higher the, the exposure to, to the risk it, uh, it brings into the, the organization. Coming back to the higher level of the method, the calculation um, component. Uh, the calculation basically processes the product risk profile, really, uh, the, the profile risk, uh, the, the product risk profile related data, together with the daily business volume brought in by that product to calculate uh, the inherent risk, one of the core metrics that I mentioned before. The inherent risk is expressed in risk units and represents the amount of risk exposure accepted by the enterprise before considering the effects of the internal risk mitigation activities and processes. In short, it basically represents the maximum exposure to non-financial risk. Uh, also prepare the visualization to make it as easy as possible to, to understand. You remember the, the products and the, their EUF um, number, which uh, basically all flow through uh, the fact that they are sold by the organization, they all flow into the, this um, uh, inherent risk um, metric. <clears throat> the calculation also processes data related to the effectiveness level of the operational processes in mitigating the risk to generate what we call the risk mitigation index or RMI on a scale from zero to, to 100. So again, uh, this RMI, I hope the animation works. <laughs> uh, so this RMI basically uh, looks at the operational uh, effectiveness level. So from the daily product uh, inherent risk are used, the risk loading, uh, business components are uh, being mapped to products, then uh, an enhanced risk and control self-assessment ma mapping uh, is done to the business components. Uh, these are, uh, just examples, there can be as many business components as uh, um, there could be in, a, in an operational process. The fewer, the better, of course. <clears throat> then we have the uh, enhanced risk and control assessment uh, categories, out of which the main or the most important ones we usually see that are people, execution and control, but there also could be business continuity, model management, data quality management, etc. Uh, then we have weightings assigned to each uh, enhanced uh, risk and control self-assessment categories. And from here, uh, there uh, results the e, uh, uh, ERCSA uh, questionnaires, the enhanced risk and control self-assessment questionnaires, which basically take in information out of the operational processes. They all uh, flow into the calculation engine and they um, result in the risk mitigation uh, index, which contributes to the calculation of the residual uh, risk or uh, are used. The residual risk represents basically the actual exposure to non-financial risk, and it is the most important metric from, uh, from the method because uh, it, its value directly correlates with the actual losses. This is where basically losses are coming from in, in this, um, uh, you know, in, this uh, in the method's understanding. So again, we have the products with their uh, risk profile expressed in uh, EUFs, which through transaction fall into various value band weightings which of course dissolve in this uh, inherent risk uh, 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 metric, which combined with the risk mitigation index calculated through the, um, uh, through the system, basically results into the, the residual risk, the residual exposure uh, to risk uh, accepted by the, by the uh, organization. As you may have noticed, 
we didn't use colors to uh, represent uh, anything suggestive, basically, as risk accounting from our, our perspective is about quantification and numbers and not colors anymore. So mm -hmm. back again to the um, overall picture. Uh, the output refers basically to the results of the data processing, and it can take several forms from uh, plain operational reports to dashboards, to data feeds, to other system, to threshold alerts, uh, to automated actions such as actively limiting the transactions on uh, certain products, all the way to regulatory reporting. Of course, once regulators realize the value that risk accounting brings to the table, then this is what we can only hope for at this time. The output makes, uh, means uh, the uh, three core metrics, the inherent risk, uh, risk mitigation index and the residual risk represented in any way may be deemed relevant by the organization. They can be uh, represented by product or business line or geography or uh, in any way that uh, uh, that's relevant. So that brings us to the feedback. Uh, as the ability to monitor risk exposure accumulations as they happen means the organization immediately acquires uh, actionable intelligence for swift decision-making. And we believe that this can be made in real time or at least in near real time. And they have two main possibilities to act immediately by adopting remedial measures, such as, <clears throat> on one hand, either limiting the transaction volumes when thresholds, uh, thresholds are reached, or, improving, or by improving the uh, operational effectiveness um, uh, score, hence the risk mitigation index, thus reduce, reducing the residual risk levels. And also by adjusting the methods parameters <clears throat> at the setup level, if required, uh, and his are, here, here are some uh, opportunities for machine learning and uh, AI use uh, is, um, based on sufficient uh, data history. There could be a possibility to, to more realistically adjust the UF values, for example, for, cert for certain products if, uh, if needed. So uh, you can imagine that having the ability to uh, more precisely identify what areas to act upon to improve the risk mitigation index, to estimate the time and resources required, and to prioritize the improvement projects based on these parameters uh, is, uh, is definitely useful. So uh, you can uh, prioritize um, improvement projects based on how uh, much of a gain you can get in the risk mitigation index, or how much time would, you, uh, would it be required for a certain um, uh, improvement to the, to the uh, risk mitigation index score, or how much would it cost to get a certain um, improvement to the risk mitigation score. So all these are, are basically um, enabled by the risk, uh, risk accounting method. And um, just to show you uh, also graphical, graphical representation of uh, all these in, uh, in a drawing of an operational process, <clears throat> you can see here, is uh, the inherent risk coming from, from operations and basically being split into mitigated risk and um, residual risk, which gets um, uh, stored, let's say it gets, uh, gets to, to remain with the organization. And of course, these are the main two um, possibilities to, to act, like either improving the risk mitigation index or reducing the, the production in, of, of more um, uh, residual risk. Uh, all of this and more, of course, you can find, I hope this video works, you can find in uh, Peter's um, book, Where Next for the Operational uh, Risk. I guess it doesn't start by itself. Uh, and uh, I also added, you'll get to see this in the, in the um, PowerPoint show that I, uh, is going to be available. And I also added to the presentation uh, four more uh, video sources and uh, also um, links that you, can, uh, that you can check. Right, so uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I welcome your questions uh, in the question session. Looking forward to, to hearing your, uh, your take of this.